What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you a special video today. It is Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th everybody. I got my Voorhees jersey on and I'm here to bring you the Friday the 13th ranking video today. So it's going to be all the Friday the 13th films from worst to best in my opinion. This isn't the right list by any means. It's just my list, my personal opinion, everything. I would love to hear from you all. So leave your comments down below and let me know what your lists are and everything. We're also going to include Friday the 13th, the remake and Freddy vs. Jason in this list. So we got 12 films to get through. So let's get to it. So we got 12 films to get through, so let's kick it off with my number 12, the Bottom of the Barrel. This is the only Friday the 13th film that's kind of a chore for me to watch, and that's Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. I'm not going to go the usual route on telling you just because it takes place mostly on a boat that that's why I don't like this movie. It's just the characters are so bad in this film, like the main girl and her clairvoyant power thing where she can see child Jason or has these visions of this traumatic stuff that happened to her. It's just really weird characters that you don't connect with and not a good Jason performance. The kills are not that fabulous in this one. Like everybody just remembers like that head punch off kill. Like that's, there's really not too many memorable moments in this film and the ending is god awful and we get a really weird intro that just kind of sets it apart from the other Friday the 13th films but the intro kind of feels like a music video and it's just really weird montage shots of places that aren't even New York and it's like just a high production value film a Jason film that had all the potential to offer us a lot of things but wasn't my kind of taste so sitting at number 12 Friday the 13th part 8 Jason Takes Manhattan Number 11 is going to be Jason X, that far-fetched crazy space one. People either really hate or they really like it. I'm kind of in the middle, mediocre. I do enjoy this film. I kind of go back and rewatch it for like that B slock type style film. Like, you know, it's not going to offer you a lot of storyline. You're not going to get a lot of in-depth or a passionate big payoff at the end, but it's still got some decent kills. There's some CGI that doesn't age very well in it and everything, but it's still, like I said, an enjoyable time. Kind of a weird storyline, but it's still crazy to see Jason in space and everything. So I think this film's pretty cool. Jason X, number 11. My number 10 is going to be Friday the 13th, part 7, The New Blood. By far, I think this is one of the coolest style looks for Jason. His design is pretty ridiculously cool in this film. He's very terrifying looking. This is where we get Jason versus Carrie storyline i just didn't think it was executed very well some of the actors and actresses it just didn't seem like they cared about their roles that much some of the characters in this film i feel like are just it's kind of they're just there to die they don't like there's a lot of stuff in this film that doesn't even serve the purpose or the story or anything like that and we focus mainly on this telepathic girl who has these carry like powers and it's just not a good written or a good character developed story like i appreciate the vision they were going for but i just think it wasn't executed as well as it could have been so that's why it's sitting here at number 10 friday the 13th part 7 the new blood my number nine is gonna be jason goes to hell i do like this film this is a wild wild ride for sure this is probably a jason film that has no business even being part of the friday the 13th franchise but I was down for the ride of this film. I didn't mind that Jason wasn't on it for a lot of screen time. It's the crazy possession story and adding in another Voorhees. I thought it was it was all interesting stuff that I really enjoyed and it kind of added stuff to the franchise for me and everything. And there's some great gnarly kills in this film. Like this one has probably some of the best Jason kills you'll ever see on screen in this one and everything. And it also has a great ending that sets up Freddy versus Jason for all us hardcore horror fans. It was a great, it's just a great iconic film. Like I remember being young with my best friend and we were so into horror movies and this was like one of those Jason films that was like, it was kind of hard to find for a while. We used to have to go to search out movie shops and you know, video places and everything and try to find it. And it's just a really good iconic film for me. Some nostalgia might play a part in it, but I do like Jason Goes to Hell my number nine number eight is going to be friday the 13th part five a new beginning go roy we have roy coming in at number eight a lot of fans don't like this film because we don't get jason Voorhees as the actual killer in this movie this is one of the only the two films that jason's not in it as the killer but roy is the killer in this one and if you pay attention to the way he acts and the way he portrays Jason like when he's getting attacked or when he's attacking people you could definitely tell it's not Jason Voorhees so it's 
it's kind of cool. It, br- it brings you back to that whodunit storyline that's kind of a callback to the original Friday the 13th film. There's some good, sexy ladies in this film as well, and just some funny, cool characters for comic relief that I really enjoyed and everything in this one. So it has a good rewatch value. I do like the like new style mask that we got for Jason in this one. It's the middle kind of story, middle arc of Tommy Jarvis's story. So it's still a really good film for me. Part of the Tommy Jarvis trilogy, so I do like it. Friday the 13th Part 5, The New Beginning. My number seven is going to be Friday the 13th Part 2, a very iconic film. Jason Voorhees appearing for the first time with the sack head and everything. It's just a really good story. We get that iconic campfire telling of his original story and all these things and the Camp Crystal Lake history and stuff. So it's just a really good iconic one to the franchise has some really good sexy ladies in this film by far in my opinion i think it's the best cast of cute chicks and there's some great kills in this film and i like the like the farmer style sack head jason like just his the way he acts the way he does it's very different and unique to the franchise it definitely does stand out for sure amongst all the other friday the 13th films we get a really good epic conclusion battle with him and jenny at the end where she finds mama Voorhees' head and jason keeps it on an altar and everything so it's it's a really good like i said iconic important one and has a lot of stuff that people remember for jason for is in this film so friday the 13th part two my number seven My number six is going to be Freddy vs. Jason, the epic battle of two great horror icons from the 80s. I saw this film at a midnight showing for the first time when it came out on the first day, and it's a really good epic movie. I know that there's a lot of fans who don't like it because Kane Hodder wasn't able to beat Jason in this film, and Ronnie Yu and a lot of the production and creators and writers had a lot of weird like kind of clashes and everything with this film and stuff they didn't agree on. But I think for what it was, what it could have been, it could have been a lot worse. For the Fr- Freddy vs. Jason that we did get and we got to see on screen, I enjoyed it. Like the epic battle with him and Jason at the end and Freddy. It's just this crazy battle where they're cutting each other up. It's gory, it's bloody, arms ripped off, eyes poked out. Like it's really good film. It's got some CGI that kind of takes away from some of the parts and some weird silly comedy in it. But... I still enjoy this film, Freddy vs. Jason, my number six. So here we are at the top five. These are the ones that I rewatch the most, my hardcore favorite ones, and these are the ones that I probably recommend. If I recommend somebody to watch one for the first time, it would be from this first five. So my number five is going to be the Friday the 13th remake. Definitely a cool written story accompanying the first three films. We get a very terrifying Jason in this movie. Like he is aggressive, out to get you, out to kill. I like all the cool little Easter eggs that are in this film on showing you how Jason kind of does what he does, how he stays underground and uses things to figure out where people are in the forest. Some people have a problem that he took a prisoner in this film, but that actually didn't bother me. It was something that I was kind of could easily look over in this film because all the other stuff is great. The kills, the cinematography, the writing, it's a very good, powerful remake and I deeply enjoyed this film. Number four, ironically, is going to be Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. Yes, this is going to be my number four, the introduction of Tommy Jarvis. Corey Feldman plays him. We get this really good, terrifying Jason in this film, and it's just one of the few Friday the 13th films that I think is actually really kind of scary. Like when you watch it, it has a lot of good terrifying scare value in it. It's got really good, interesting characters and actors and actresses. Like this one kind of has everything you want in a Friday the 13th film. Like it really does have a lot of good stuff in this film. Kills, the the design and the way Jason came out in this film. Like it's really good The epic battle with him and Corey Feldman at the end is probably one of the best, most iconic moments in the Friday the 13th franchise. So Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter, my number four. Rolling in at number three is going to be the original Friday the 13th from 1980. I definitely do enjoy this film. I adore this film. I know it's kind of B-movie status. It's very amateur actors and the writing and all these things and the production value. It's very old school. It doesn't age very well, but for the time it came out and what they were able to accomplish, I appreciate everything about this film. And it kicked off, like I said, my favorite horror franchise of all time. The Pamela Voorhees twist reveal at the end I thought was fabulous. 
we didn't get a lot of female villains in movies and to have her at the, the twist at the end i thought that was really good we get an epic appearance of jason at the end even though it's like that dream for real quick and he pulls her down into the water and, and it's just oh some cool concepts one of the first films that really kind of created the style of the final girl and everything so I do enjoy this film, Friday the 13th, the original, my number three. Number two is going to be Friday the 13th, part three in 3D. I definitely think this is an underrated Friday the 13th film in most people's eyes. I like the Richard Broker performance of Jason. It's the introduction of the hockey mask. I do enjoy the characters in this film. This is probably one of my favorite casts in a Friday the 13th film. I enjoy spending time with them before Jason kills them. They're all funny. They're all likable and relatable. And I think that's really cool. Even that weird kind of crazy biker gang that's introduced in this movie. It's just got some cool moments in this film. I just, it's one of my hardcore rewatches. And every time I rewatch this film, I deeply enjoy it and everything. It's just a really good one. And I think underrated in most people's eyes because they focus more on the 3D and a lot of that stuff going on in the 80s. But I think it doesn't take away from the story. It adds to the story because it gives you new angles and new things to do with the kills. And I thought it was it was really good and really well done. Like I said, it's one of my hardcore rewatches. Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D, my number two. Now, Taking the Crown, the very top spot, if you know me at all, my favorite Friday the 13th film. I watch this every Halloween. This is my most rewatched one. I've probably seen this movie close to 50 times. Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives, directed by Tom McLaughlin, starring Tom Matthews, Jennifer Cook, and C.J. Graham. One of my favorite performances of Jason and that Carpenter re-stun, redone, ugh, if I can talk, redone style Jason with the gloves and the utility belt. I actually do really enjoy that Jason. It kind of, I'm a big Batman fan, so it kind of felt like Jason meeting Batman a little bit. Like he had his tool belt with all his weapons on it and everything. So it was really cool. We get that epic beginning when Tommy Jarvis goes to kill Jason and he like stabs him with the fence piece and the lightning comes down and just brings Jason back to life. So it's our first appearance of the actual zombie style Jason. And the epic conclusion and the way this film takes off, like it's just so powerful and I like all of it. Even the silly kind of joking comical moments. I think the comedy that's sprinkled in this film, it works really well for me. It hits in all the right areas. So it still has a gruesome style, Jason, that has a great kills in it. And we get a very good little comedy sprinkled in it. So it was really good balance for a Jason film. And I loved it. We get an amazing soundtrack by Alice Cooper. So the 80s, the music in this one is very 80s. And it very much fits the film and the intenseness of Jason in this movie. And there's not a lot of like nudity or anything in this film. But I do enjoy the characters like the sheriff, Tommy Jarvis, Tom Matthews' performance of him was really good. Jennifer Cook is the girl that helps him out, the daughter of the sheriff. Oh, it's just so good. Like even that racing, like that car scene when she's driving the red car and she's trying to dodge all the cops and stuff. And then her dad stops her and Tommy Jarvis is like, his head is between her legs. Like, oh, it's just a really good, fun movie. Great ride, even all the way to the end when we get the conclusion of Tommy trying to kill Jason in the lake with the boat surrounded by the fires. Just has everything I want. Like I said, this is my hardcore rewatch. Die hard fan of this film. Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives, my number one. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the ranking video. It's Friday the 13th and I had to. You know, it's my favorite horror franchise, so I just wanted to get this out there talk about Jason. I'm going to be watching some of these movies today and binging them while I'm watching the kids and stuff. So you guys have a safe and happy Friday the 13th. Peace out.